Immigration law expert Gary Eisenberg joins us in studio. Gary is also very well versed in public international law, having worked on a number of extradition cases. And he's here to explain to us what diplomatic immunity means, obviously, in relation to Grace Mugabe and the recent assault case charged against her. Gary, thanks very much for joining us and sharing Pleasure. your insight on this, this, this very topical uh, issue this week with um, the First Lady of Zimbabwe after her alleged uh, assault against a 20-year-old model in Santon and uh, then all sorts of bungled uh, her supposedly handing herself over to police and then not and not appearing at the magistrate's court. Just to catch uh, everyone up, um, a statement was released um, by government and uh, the government of Zimbabwe had uh, dispatched a diplomatic note of a barley. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that right, to the Department of International Relations and Cooperation invoking the diplomatic immunity cover. Now, first of all, what is diplomatic immunity and how does it cover people like Grace Mugabe or not cover her? It's an intriguing question. Uh, it stems from the Vienna Convention Diplomatic Relations of 1961 and every country has dealt with it in, mm -hmm. a, in a particular way. We've adopted it. Um, we have the Diplomatic and Privileges Act uh, which we've adopted, and we have legislation. Mm. Uh, but um, diplomatic immunity has evolved over many hundreds of years. Um, every country seems to have bought into mm. common precepts of uh, public international law regarding uh, immunities granted to heads of state or officials representing um, foreign missions. Mm. Uh, diplomatic missions in foreign states. Uh, this is round two <coughs> for Grace Mugabe mm. because what happened to her in Hong Kong in 2009, yeah. um, very soon after she assaulted a cameraman, Richard Jones, yes. when she walked out of the Shangri-La Hotel, um, she um, caused him a lot of harm around the face, déjà vu, uh, with her diamond ring. And... Uh, the Hong Kong government uh, declared very soon after that that she was immune from prosecution. Uh, why? <coughs> because of a concept called personal representation. Mm -hmm. uh, immunity which is granted to heads of state and uh, through practice uh, their immediate family members. Mm -hmm. She's the spouse of Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. president of Zimbabwe. In this case a very close friend of our president and it would be a stretch of all our collective imaginations to understand that our government would uh, pierce the veil of immunity mm. granted to heads of state and their spouses mm. by prosecuting Grace Mugabe. Mm. But going through the, the legal process and the legal systems um, and you know, if, 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 if such a course is followed, um, we spoke, we spoke to another expert on immigration law and um, he seems to think it's impossible to invoke diplomatic immunity unless it's been uh, gazetted well in advance. Obviously, in this case, it wasn't. Well, it would be very interesting to understand the basis was. for such an opinion. Mm. Uh, in this particular case, I would think in terms of law and practice, and practice, and that's my emphasis, it would be staggering to find that the South African prosecutorial authorities will pursue Grace Mugabe, even if she entered South Africa on a, on a civil passport mm. and not on a <clears throat> diplomatic passport. She happens to be the First Lady of Zimbabwe. And what the South African government would probably do is weigh the interests of diplomatic relations between the two countries versus prosecuting her for an alleged assault on a South African citizen. Um, normally what countries do is they would weigh uh, international relations to be far more important. Mm. Uh, and in this particular case, it would seriously be a test case uh, should the South African government decide to pursue um, Grace Mugabe in, uh, in our courts, even though mm. our judiciary and our prosecutorial okay. authorities are supposed to be independent of the executive. Mm. We'll soon see, and this, I think this would be a first uh, in the last 50 years. Um, one should also remember that al-Bashir, um, with 
two international arrest warrants issued by the International Court of Justice, uh, International Criminal Court, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. against him for crimes against humanity and <coughs> genocide um, at presidential whim. Uh, although yeah. we have a uh, clear obligation to have arrested <coughs> him and prevent him from leaving uh, and to deliver him to the International Criminal yeah. Court, we let him go because we felt that um, diplomatic relations were far more important than any arrest warrant for war, war crimes and crimes mm. against humanity and genocide. So in this case, it would be, uh, this is why I keep on emphasizing, it's, it's more of a practical matter than a, a purely technical one.